Welcome to part two of our five part series on plantar fasciitis. In part two, we're gonna cover how plantar fasciitis is diagnosed and go over some of the problems with the diagnostic tools and the interpretation of those tests. You might be shocked at just how inaccurate they are. Please make sure you watch all the videos to get a full understanding of your problem. Hey, it's Glenn here from MeHab, the world's leading physical therapy alternative, where we educate and empower you to take control of your recovery. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button, and all the links we mentioned in the video can be found in the description below. As always, this information is meant for educational and demonstration purposes only. With that out of the way, let's get into it. We rely heavily on assessment, diagnostic tools, and the reports to get an accurate diagnosis for all kinds of conditions. As with everything, some are better than others. Some are touted as the gold standard, however being the gold standard or the best assessment tool does not always mean it's the most accurate. It just means it's the best we have right now. It seems pretty clear that no one is exactly sure what causes plantar fasciitis. To make things even more confusing, the tools used to diagnose it are just as unclear. Palpation. Palpation is often used in the determination of plantar fasciitis, but its validity is overstated. Palpation in general has been shown to be a poor assessment tool for most conditions. The foot, and in particular the bottom of the foot, is very sensitive and capable of detecting the slightest pressures. If you've ever gotten sand or a small stone in your shoe, you'll know exactly how sensitive it is. Without looking, you know exactly where it is, what it is, whether it's a stick or a stone, whether it's hard or soft, sharp or dull. Clinicians will press the underside of the heel called the calcaneal tuberosity and associate a pain response with plantar fasciitis. However, while the plantar fascia has some attachment here, Several intrinsic foot muscles also attach to the calcaneal tuberosity. So how do you know what is actually causing the pain? Well, you don't. Pain can be provoked with palpation even in people without plantar fasciitis, and does not always mean that there's a problem or tissue damage. As mentioned, it is also inaccurate in determining which structure is the problem, especially in a case like this where there are multiple structures layered in the same location. X-ray. Radiographs aka x-rays are a cheap and fast way to get some insight. Often heel spurs are seen on the images and associated with plantar fasciitis. However, this is not always true. I would tend to believe that it's almost always untrue. There are many people that have heel spurs without any symptoms. Spurs take a long time to develop, so it's more than likely you've had it long before the onset of your symptoms. An interesting side note is that heel spurs actually appear below or deep to the plantar fascia where the foot muscles attach, and the surgical removal of bone spurs has not been shown to decrease pain, so the general consensus is that they are irrelevant. Diagnostic Ultrasound and MRI An ultrasound or an MRI is the go-to assessment tool for measuring plantar fascia thickness, which studies have related to plantar fasciitis. The standard rule for the interpretation is that a plantar fascia with a thickness greater than 4 mm is indicative of plantar fasciitis. However, several studies have also shown plantar fascia thicknesses up to 7 mm in people without pain. A small study of endurance runners found thicknesses over 4 mm in 41% of the subjects without pain, meaning they had abnormal plantar fascia per the ultrasound, but no symptoms. 48% showed structural abnormalities ranging from mild regions of fluid collection to partial thickness tears, again without any symptoms. I question the accuracy of measuring thickness from ultrasound images. Like anything with human interpretation, they are prone to human error, and when dealing with poorly defined structures on a screen and literally fractions of a millimeter between a 3.5 millimeter normal reading and a 4 millimeter pathologic reading, I would be hesitant to hang my hat on the reliability of those results. No standardized instrumentation or procedures have ever been created for measuring the plantar fascia, and the threshold of 4 millimeters is not a valid measure. It's just a number that's used because that's just the number that you use. Interestingly, foot position will also alter the thickness of the plantar fascia. A relaxed foot has the greatest plantar fascia thickness and with the foot dorsiflex or pulled up and the toes extended, creates the thinnest state. This means that even slight variations in foot and toe position could easily influence the thickness, shifting someone from normal to abnormal. Thickening has also been shown to occur with regular activity and repetitive loading showing that thickening of the plantar fascia is not always related to pathology. Does thickening of the plantar fascia even matter? Clearly it does not 100% indicate plantar fasciitis. Is it a normal adaptive response to loading? No one truly knows. 
but I would bet that in most cases it's actually a natural occurrence that is either a normal variant or an adaptation to activity. As you can clearly see now, the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is not as cut and dry as it's made out to be. I've said it before, but medicine is no different from gambling. Providers gather information to take an educated guess on what has the greatest statistical likelihood of being the winner. Unfortunately, in this case, the information they're getting is flawed, and their bet is not a sure thing. Next, I'm going to give you the scoop on the common treatments for plantar fasciitis, whether they actually work, and help you understand why your recovery is taking so long. Before you go, hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.